Hello everyone and welcome to Puff Time, a series where I'm almost out of cigarettes, so I'm not going to be smoking one, but it's still Puff Time, so don't worry, you're in the right place. We've been talking about anger for our, in our last um, five or six or seven Puff Time videos. And we're actually finally to the close of anger and our topic of anger. So, um, the last subject um, is being accountable. To promote a more rewarding and responsible manner of, of relating, the causes of your anger must be identified. An awakened mind should result in change patterns of living. Be aware of your anger. Um, set goals to become more relational. Anger repels others. I don't know anybody who likes to be around somebody who's angry. Um, in the introduction to anger, I mentioned how um, most anger is linked with um, the feeling that our needs or our self-worth or our uh, convictions are ignored. Um, and when anger is expressed negatively, it hinders us from connecting with others. And when anger is properly asserted or responsibly dropped, harmony is possible. Um, I talked about this. You know, if you express your anger in a negative way, nobody's going to pay attention to you or people are going to want to get away from you. But if you express it in a positive way, if you're assertive or if you drop it, people are actually going to be able to be around you and be okay with you <laughs> and how you react to things. So um, one of the first things to do is make amends. An inevitable byproduct of misguided anger is damaged relationships. It is not enough for us to resolve to move forward with a new perspective on managing anger. To truly find balance, we must be willing to make amends. You can't just strive to move forward without at least going back and apologizing for what you've done or how you've hurt other people. Um, it is not your primary task to convince people of your changed way of life, though. You can apologize. You should apologize. But a lot of times, if you've hurt people enough, they're not going to accept your apology. And you can't force them to believe that you're ready to change your ways. If they choose not to forgive you, don't make your progress dependent on their reaction. If somebody doesn't forgive you, don't be like, oh well, I give up, I guess I'm just going to be this angry, self-loathing person for the rest of my life. No, no, don't let the way other people react to your apologies d determine your progress. Don't let it stop you. Have a healing heart, even if the communication can't go full circle. Know inwardly that you truly desire to bear no grudges. While there are no guarantees that we can tie down all loose ends of all involving past anger, we can proceed with a clean future. I mentioned this in the last video. The past is past. It is done. It is over with. So when you made somebody angry in the past and you didn't handle it properly, it happened. It's going to leave some scars. People aren't going to trust you. People are going to be afraid of you. But the fact that you can apologize and you can proceed with a clean slate, with a clean future, you, you know inwardly, you yourself are, are genuine about it. They may not believe you, but you know that you're genuine. You can apologize and that's all you can do. You can't force people to believe you. Be authentic about your anger management efforts is another step in um, being accountable. No one can claim immunity from emotional trauma. When you feel angry, depressed, or tense, or anxious, or afraid, or what have you, talk about it. Be open. It is virtually impossible to hide emotions. They will manifest themselves whether we like it or not. Um, you can hide how you feel for a while. Um, some people can go years burying stuff, denying how they feel to themselves and to others. But ultimately, after a while, it's going to get so big, 
it's going to get so powerful that we have no control over it, and then it's going to overtake, and it will wreak havoc. It'll be like a bull in a china shop, just knocking things over, breaking things, whether it be relationships or um, sanity, personal sanity, uh, or just anything. It can ruin anything. So don't just let your emotions pile up and try and hide them and try and avoid them because they're going to manifest themselves and it's going to be messy. Um, confess your anger to a trusted friend. Um, I, I mentioned this in my last video. Um, you got to find somebody that you can trust to talk about this with. Um, you have to surround yourself with people who are going to be positive influences on you who aren't going to judge you for feeling the way you feel because you got to feel your feelings. You can't ignore them. You can't sweep them under the rug. Um, you, you'll you find that if you talk to somebody you trust about it, you'll get support and they will help you be accountable. Um, and if you don't have that person in your life and you feel desperate that you can't find them and you, you're really discouraged, message me. Talk to me. I'll, I'll try and help in any way that I can. Um, because nobody should have to go through this alone. Um, you're not alone. Another thing that can also help is um, if you write. I personally find writing to be a good escape for me. Uh, you can write poetry, prose, lyrics, um, short stories. You can even just sit down and write a whole entire paragraph. It doesn't have to be grammatically correct. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just getting out your emotions. And trust me, just getting them out of your body, out of your mind, out of whatever, just getting them somewhere else helps a lot. Um, another thing that could help is music. I like to listen to music that matches how I feel because it helps me feel like I'm not alone, that other people have gone through this, that they have pulled through. That helps me a lot. But um, in general, just listen to music and focus on that. It can really, really help. Um, and again, find someone who you can be accountable to. Find someone you can share your struggles with. Because, trust me, a lot of people go through this. They just don't want to talk about it. So, anyway, that's... Um, I'm going to close out with that. Um, so that's it for my anger um, study topic, whatever. Um, if you guys have any questions or if you feel like I didn't touch anything or um, I kind of skimmed over something too quickly and you'd like me to sit down and just kind of focus solely on that, Message me, leave a comment, um, let me know. We can either talk one-on-one -on -one about it via messaging, or I can make a whole entire video about my thoughts on it. Either way, I'd love to hear your feedback and your input and um, what you guys think of this. Um, and my next uh, topic is going to be depression. Um, and I'm actually going to be working from a workbook that's written by the same people that did this one. Which, by the way, here it is. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Les Carter and Dr. Frank Minerth. They are the ones who wrote this, uh, the Anger Workbook. They're the ones who wrote this. Um, like I said at the beginning of this, I do recommend getting a workbook or just a book in general to work your way through. Not exactly this one necessarily. It's good. Um, but there's plenty of workbooks out there. There's tons of stuff on anger or whatever you may be going through. And it really helps out uh, to write it down and to read that other people go through this as well. So I like to thank these guys, um, and my depression topic is actually going to also be geared out of that, um, a book written by those same guys. So it's going to be the same type of uh, layout and breakdown of depression. So stay tuned for that. Um, keep your eyes out for that. Uh, I will be taking notes and gathering material for that. Um, and until then, I hope this study helped you guys with your anger or helped you figure out how to give advice to somebody else who's got anger issues. And uh, just remember, stay strong, keep your head up, and keep in mind what we talked about in managing and maintaining your anger and being accountable. So um, until then, uh, see you in my next video. Bye.